The year is 1456. Merely three years ago, Christendom watched on as the Eastern Roman Empire and Constantinople fell to the Ottoman Turk, led by Mehmed II. Now, the city of Belgrade and its walls are threatened by that very same threat. And now the Kingdom of Hungary and the mercenaries of Serbia must look to its defense. Seniors What's up guys and welcome back. We do have another 1212 AD siege for you here today. And this is another historical scenario. We have the siege of Belgrade, not the uh, second one, but the first one. Um, where in history, the um, Hungarians led by John Hunyadi have managed to uh, defeat the Turks. But will they do so here again in today's 1212 AD siege? We will see. Um, but yeah, in history, um, this was a uh, Hungarian victory for, um, well, for, for Hungary and for Belgrade, I guess. And the Serbs, uh, the Serbian mercenaries that are, are here as well. Um, they were, there were uh, about 7,000 mercenaries uh, put into the city in like quite quickly in a last minute sort of defense uh, by uh, John Hunyadi as he was trying to just delay the Ottomans uh, while he could raise a larger force to save the city. Um, which he did go on and do. He raised a force of around about 60,000 crusaders, um, uh, mainly peasants, um, which is why we have a whole bunch of these light shock infantry over here. And we have uh, militia spears as well. So yeah, some uh, very much like peasanty type units. Um, so a lot of those are here today. And then we do have uh, around about 10 to 12,000 cavalry. I mean, we don't actually have that many. Um, there might be a I don't know, a thousand or so. But yeah, 10 uh, to 12,000 cavalry made up of a lot of light cav here. As you can see some of them here. We also have a fair few of these Servientes and we have some Hungarian knights as well. Um, but yes, so there was a large relief force that did come to the aid of Belgrade uh, in history. They actually won a naval battle along um, the river. I don't know what the, I can't remember the name of the river. It might just be the Danube um, that Belgrade sits on. I think it is the Danube. Um, but yeah, they had a big old uh, ship battle there because the Ottomans had cut off and blockaded uh, the city uh, by river as well. And uh, yeah, and then uh, they had a, um, a ship battle and then they were able to land uh, and bring in their forces to relieve the city uh, was John Hunyadi. So that's why we have uh, these guys already in the forest. It's kind of like the, the ship battles already happened and, and then won and now they can come in reinforce the city. But yes, it is starting as a 4v2 in favor of the Ottomans. Uh, the reinforcement armies do have a delay. I think they have about a 10 or so minute long delay. So uh, yeah, they will be able to uh, attack after 10 minutes uh, from when the Ottomans have landed. Uh, so that is pretty much now as the first Ottoman troops are starting to land on the walls. We have some Kanbazan Axemen here. They're landing and they are uh, going to try and do their bit and try and take these walls. But they are fighting some pretty heavy spearmen uh, and spears have had a bit of a buff in 12, 12, 80. They have better melee stats now than quite a few swords. Uh, so yeah, these guys actually are going to be tough to break through. But axes and shock, you know, they have a pretty good counter against spears uh, if left to their own devices. So they should be able to uh, do some decent damage. But we will see. Uh, we have shock infantry on the walls over here. We do have some Hungarian shock uh, supporting this fight on the wall. So they're fighting some Voynuk swords. These are some more like sort of like they sort of look a bit more Turkish, these guys. Um, sort of more like Rumelian, maybe. But uh, yeah, they don't have to the Turks any sort of like uh, Eastern European, like Serbian sort of units um, that uh, are in their rosters, like the uh, the Boyars, and um, uh, there's quite a few of their speed, so they're not able to bring as well because they're more like Serb and, um, and Hungarian sort of type units. Uh, which, you know, they haven't conquered Serbia or uh, Hungary yet. They've still got to do that, but yes. It's like uh, the Serbs and also the Hungarians are going to just defend the breach points that have been opened up here by great bombards. They did have around about three ca uh, 300 cannons at this battle with the, uh, with the Turks. A lot of them were actually on the Navy. So when the Navy uh, was destroyed, actually it was a massive loss for Mehmed II and uh, the Ottoman cause to take the city. They've okay, just got some Yaya spearmen here that are trying to uh, break through first. We've got some more heavy spears over here. Looks like they're in charge of defending this breach point for now. Yes, if you are enjoying seeing 1212 AD action on the channel and would like to see some more, 
do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here and a comment to show your support. It really does help out the channel as we work towards, I guess, 11k subs. We are working in that direction. And yeah, if you want to send in any of your own 1220 AD replays, then feel free to, uh, to do so. Uh, the link for my Discord is down below in the description. It's also the best place to go and get involved in any sort of uh, scenarios uh, like this one or any streams that we do on the channel as well. Um, as yeah, they're, they're, that's where we host all of them. So if you ever want to get involved in those, then be a you know feature on YouTube. That's the place to go to. We've got pole arms here uh, going in, and they are uh, kebabbing these uh, these as that sort of they are or they are Yaya spears or more Yaya spears. But yeah, they're kebabbing those boys up, and the Turks know one or two things about kebabs themselves, or well, at least they're going to in the in the future. Well, they know this is not a good idea, but yeah, in they go. These are heavy pull arm infantry. They are winning. And I think the Ayas I don't think they're trying to pull through, but I think, I don't know, maybe the player's giving them a little attack order and it's drawn them forward, but I think he is. I think they are trying to pull through. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, the unit is kind of vaguely pulling through, so you need to be careful that. But also, the Hungarians need to be careful. I think another wall is about to come down here, and we're going to have a huge breach point being opened up here in this corner. And with this wall collapsing, it might collapse onto these pole arms here. Uh, they might need to be careful of that. And a uh, mortar is also uh, being used uh, to sort of shell the Hungarian positions there. And these mortars are deadly. They can get a lot of kills. Um, and there were historically some mortars at the siege as well. There's about two or three sort of mortars uh, available. So, uh, yeah, there you go. It looks like the spears have been kicked out. That's the first routing unit there, it looks like, for the Turks. And actually, a few more over here starting around as well. We've got some Hornic uh, swords on the walls being cleared out. The shock infantry for Hungary are doing God's work, cutting down the heretic. Christendom must be saved here today. If Belgrade falls, it'll be Budapest next, and then after that it'll be Vienna. The enemy have rallied their units. Screaming to there you go. Let's see whether that the uh, Hungarians can win that fight. They should probably, I mean, we need to see more support really, I feel like, from archers, um, really for uh, lead some of these wall fights, or just, you know, to shoot the units in reserve down here. I mean, there's, uh, there's uh, pole arms waiting down here for the Hungarians. I'll be shooting these guys up as much as possible. There's a lot of uh, yeah, archers around here, lots of janissaries, uh, like hybrid units, which are gonna be very useful for the Turks. You know, those janissaries uh, are good in both melee and also uh, using a bow. So they have a double purpose. So it's not like a normal archer if they run out of ammo uh, they, they just, when they go into melee. They're probably not going to get many kills. Those janissaries will get killed. And yeah, as you can see here, yeah, the Hungarians, the city is starting to burn as these pole arms are free. And I'm sure this won't be the last of Belgrade to burn. I'm sure many more uh, houses are going to be collapsed. And it looks like, yeah, the Yaya Spears here starting to break. There's some more light spears in here as well. They're uh, starting to go. But it looks like they are, you know, extolling uh, some sort of toll on these uh, on these medium spears of the uh, of the Serbs. We have, of course, some light spears, some militia spears coming forward here. So just, you know, some, I don't know, mere peasants giving some spears and told, fight for your city, the Turk is coming. And there you go, Yaya Spears giving... Uh, sent in. I think they're trying to go through this gap in the line, but they are going to get stopped there by Militia Spears. The gap's still there, though. There is a bit of a gap uh, currently uh, here where the uh, Turks could try and get through and use that uh, to try and, you know, make this breach point larger or just unsustainable. But it looks like a uh, Medium Spear is going to be sh uh, shunted into position and uh, make that gap almost invulnerable. And here we go. It looks like uh, a huge horde of infantry is now going in. We've got Azaps here, we've got Voidux going in. They need to uh, probably set up these Azaps and let them do their javelin work. I mean, it looks like they're sending in more Voidux now just to tie down these swords, as uh, solid these spears. They should also think about maybe landing on the wall again and, you know, just challenging there because that would stretch these defenders a little bit. Because right now, they don't really have a lot over on this side here. I don't know why the Azaps uh, haven't moved forward and thought about landing. They are already fighting light spears on that wall there. Uh, but there you go. Azabs have dropped that tower and then have not actually landed. They're actually going to go through the breach. Whether that's pathfinding, it quite possibly could be. But she isn't, though, if this unit might actually attach the tower. Yeah, 
they are continuing to fight down there, the Azabs, and they are doing their bit. And uh, looks like, I think there has been a bit of a sally out over here. I think we missed it, but it was just like a cav sally out. Uh, didn't really get very far. I tried to take out this Voynuk sword and uh, it kind of failed. I think, um, yeah, you can see the uh, general over his uh, had a bit of action. He went into combat and I think he combated with the uh, the cab and got rid of it. There is a lot of swords are breaking. 97 and they're breaking those guys. So it's pretty early for the Ottomans. It looks like uh, we're going to see quite a bit of farming, I think, going on here by the shock. Uh, but I don't blame them. You know, make sure those guys stay dead. Looks like the walls are kind of uh, staying in command of the Hungarians for now. There's more Ottomans getting routed there. But this is a concern for the Hungarians. We have Napatoons on the walls and right by the breach point. Can they throw their Napatoons, those explosive bombs, into the breach below? Yes, they can. And they're doing some devastating damage. They're pretty much just dropping them on the heads of the pole arms. And that looks like that's breaking Militia Spears. Yeah, the pole arms here are starting to uh, lose as well. They might start to break. That's what Nafatoons do. They break morale. They don't necessarily kill men. They just break uh, the morale of units because you're having a, a, a clay pot with explosives dropped on you. That's pretty scary. Uh, and yeah, you can see here, these guys are starting to wave at 57 men left. It's not too bad and too outraged for them to break that point. There's nothing ready to replace it. So the Ottomans are going to be able to storm down the street, as you can see here. Uh, the Hungarians have got uh, forces moving up and a bit some Serbian mercenaries as well. Um, here we have a pole arm, another pole arm and a spear. It looks like they are being rushed to sort of block off the street. But how far up the street the Ottomans are going to get, I don't know. We get quite a way. We will see. But yeah, the Hungarians desperately trying to hold on now for this breach point. There you go, more guys finding the fate of the, uh, the Navitoons. Look at this, there's insane the Navitoons dropping down here. They are destroying this uh, the spear line here. These uh, spearmen, yeah, it's been absolutely destroyed. Very, very nice. There's no real reference that the Navitoons are uh, ac actually at Belgrade, but it's always just a fun addition to add. I find like the Ottoman armies have them here. Makes it a little bit more fun. It's a, a big risk, big reward sort of type unit. They can either go on and get like a few hundred kills or they can, you know, just get focused down and kill by archers, which I'm surprised they've really not been. They are still 32 out of 32. No crosswoman or archer has done anything about them. Um, but we are about to see some acts by the Hungarians here and we're going to see light cavalrymen rush in now and deal with these Azaps and also looks like they're going to deal with uh, some Azap archers over here and try and run these guys down. And here you go, John Hun Hunyadi and his reinforcement army is starting to arrive. And there you go, the cav is going in. So just some light cav, it looks like they might, you know, you could argue they're like the skirmishers, like the, the scouts. But they have been met by some heavy cav here of the Turks. And the two sides clash and the fields outside Belgrade. I mean, they were some uh, uh, Rumeli CPI cab there and some Delhi cab. Yeah, they, they have uh, routed the lights there very easily. They have routed an, an Azap, but uh, it's a small win. They're trying to go on to the, uh, the Javis here. They are going to get a, a connection. Some of the unit was stopped by uh, CPI cab, but it does look like they are going to get into the Javis a little bit and do some damage to them. They kill about like sort of 30 or so of them. Not a bad result, but yeah, these guys are getting swamped. Looks like more light cav is arriving. Uh, but the cavalry uh, has more concerningly unveiled another Ottoman army that was just hidden away in here. There's a whole load more Voynux. Um, and also we have Silver Guard Archers and uh, Janshis here. So uh, yeah, I mean, in a way, them not attacking has helped the Hungarians here because it's not actually a 4v2. Uh, it's actually become a 3v2, which is much better odds. Um, but yeah, this uh, army has kind of prepared for the Hungarian reinforcements, which is kind of a bit cheesy. We were kind of like, ah, they shouldn't really have done that. Um, but I guess at the same time, they are kind of just protecting the flank of the uh, of the siege lines. That's a, not a bad idea. And they are going to charge in the light spear. I would say the light cap should not charge in there. Uh, they're being chased down by more Delhi uh, light shock, so they might uh, catch those Hungarians, but we'll see. What is going on over here now? We have, yeah, more light cab is getting sent in.
And they're fighting CPI Cav down here. So they're fighting some of the best Cav around. And that's probably the best Cav in game. They've lost three riders uh, compared to pretty much a full unit here of Light Cav. They'll get run down and killed off. Of um, but yeah, yeah, as you can see, the breach points are display. not looking good for the... Uh, well, they're looking a bit better for the Turks. I wouldn't say they're looking awful for the Hungarians. But um, they have been forced back. And you can see the Javis are jabbing into the back of these spears. They're breaking those spears and now the Turks can move on further up this line uh, they can go and face this uh, this line here which is made up of pole arms and swords so, uh, they're waiting there and they aren't going to get support from the wall so much uh, in that one and here we go Cav Sally out I just saw this uh, Pronajar Lance is sallying out with a general it looks like they're going to try and bait this general here they could potentially get him uh, they were trying to go for the archers here but there are pole arms as you can see um, that are also uh, coming up to support their generals and uh, that is probably the reason why the Ponajar Lancers are really retreating. But yep, the Turks are pushing on but there are reinforcements coming in as well for John Hunyadi. He is uh, sallying out actually his military spears out this gate here and he looks like he's going to uh, match up and you know put a infantry threat outside the walls for the Turks to have to think about. But there is a reinforcement now arriving as you can see here. The Peasant Crusade has arrived. They are ready to do their bit, fight and dive hungry for Christendom. I mean, these unit, these peasant units are quite funny because they are like made up of just men and women that just like are like dressed in peasant wear and uh, just have pitchforks and spike clubs. The militia spears are a bit more, you know, professional. But these uh, light shock are pretty awful, so and they have uh, pretty much zero missile block chance. So if they do get stuck in co uh, combat, they will probably die. Serviente is going in here against CPI Cav. They're probably going to get routed pretty quickly. But here we go, more Hungarian knights getting stuck in, helping around some of those uh, t uh, CPI Cav. But here we go, yeah, uh, Serviente and other stuff going in. And the uh, cavalry force is being sent in. And there is reference there was a fair few knights at this battle, uh, which is why there are Hungarian knights here. But because uh, his reference that a Hungarian knight was killed by Mehmed II when the uh, sally out force from the city, uh, not from out, not they came through the city and then sallied out themselves in history, but they've kind of gone around the city this time. But yeah, uh, the sally out force in history, uh, the sallied out and actually got all the way to uh, Mehmed's um, tent or to his, uh, his camp and actually, uh, yeah, Mehmed had to have. Ha to actually slay a uh, Hungarian as, uh, as they broke through his bodyguard. But yeah, They're it looks like a few yet. charges going on over here. Looks like Turks are forming square. Are we in NTW3 or something? But yeah, I think it's an ability that the Janissaries do have. Uh, they can form square and they can sort of like, you know, nullify a calf charge a little bit. It doesn't really stop it. Um, as you can see, they're still losing uh, decisively, but it does sort of like, you know, lessen the blow pretty uh, quite a lot. Fable bodyguard over here, they're losing decisively and it looks like uh, the CPI is sort of supporting a uh, little about looking the at battle. these uh, Hungarian knights wavering of 59 men, that is not good. Despot Spears now arriving to help their general here, uh, which is obviously going to turn that fight in favour of the uh, Ottomans with that support there. I don't know where the Sultan actually is, where is Mehmed? Oh, he's here, from the he's enemy. here, he's with his Janissaries, uh, which is probably the safest place he can be at the moment. Looks like uh, the uh, Naftoons on the wall, they're out of ammo, it looks like they're going to go into melee. Turks are still pushing on quite nicely in this breach point here. They're killing off more of these spears. Shock does excel quite well against spearmen. So yeah, these uh, Janissaries in here are going to absolutely slay the uh, the Serbian infantry. I think it's these the Serbs, these ones. They are getting shot at in the flank by archers, but it doesn't seem like it's affecting them too much. They're still combat even. Uh, we've got some Hungarian knights here, causing more problems for the Azap archers, just trying to do as much damage to them as possible. Yeah, more spears here. Look like they're about to join the fight and help turn this fight in favor of the uh, general down here. They really want to keep this guy alive. He must have a fair amount of an army left. Uh, Hungarian knights still going in after the archers. I do like the Hungarian knights. They have like black armor, which looks awesome. I think that's in reference to like the, the black uh, mercenary lead, like Black Legion Mercenary Force, uh, they're called something like that. It's like the first uh, professional army, uh, supposedly like medieval professional army. I mean, you, I was about to say the, mo the first professional army in Europe, but that would definitely be the Romans. 
Um, but yeah, um, I think it's like the first medieval professional army. Um, so it might be like a nod to them, I don't know. And they were formed in Hungary. Yeah, the Sultan is not looking so great. I don't know if that's him there with the red. Uh, well, it's not a Sultan, it's a general, uh, like a, a lieutenant of him. But he's not looking so great. He's uh, still losing in this fight, and he's got to get rear charge here for that Hungarian knight that uh, just has been a pest at Azaps. Uh, John Hunyadi is over here. He's the king's bodyguard. He's just sort of standing by. We don't have... I'm surprised there isn't a unique general um, for John Hunyadi since, uh, well, we're in the 15th century here with 15th century units. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm surprised they just didn't add a unique general for him, uh, for Hungary. But, uh, oh well. And it looks like now we've got gu uh, guard archers maybe coming forward. Gunners here as well. I think they're going to try and rout these, uh, these cav units here. I mean, yeah, the general I think is trying to, is going to retreat. He sees the archers are, you know, threatening him. They go to uh, loose some volleys and it looks like they're going to try and kill him. But they're not going to allow it. John Hunyadi's getting out of there. I think he's Hungarian knight, so the cream of the crop of uh, Christendom are going to die. A charge there from the cab, you know, just weaken and slows down the Solak guard archers. It's a suicidal charge, obviously, but it keeps these guys out of, uh, stops them from, uh, from shooting for a bit more. They can still form square while being charged. It's insane. And there you go, the general is the uh, routed. Mission success, you could say, for the... Uh, Cav, but you'd hope that the Cavs is maybe going to get more uh, more kills, really. I feel like uh, they definitely could have done uh, a bit more effect. This Cav unit over here is losing and it's just fighting a sword unit. I think maybe because uh, Gunners are maybe having a say in it. Yeah, the Hungarian Knights, they need to get out of there. Get out of there and go for something else, potentially. I think they're going to go for a side charge into this Voynuk sword. And yeah, I mean, the, the cab charge has been slowed as well because the gunners, that's a, an ability they have. It looks like, yeah, the cab's going to go through this gap here. And it's seen an opportunity, I think, to go for this general because he's actually still alive with 11 men left. Going back to My the siege lines the inside the settlement. Uh, the pole arms have now got stuck in here. And the Janissary shock entry is being stopped now by a uh, light shock of the Hungarians and also these uh, pole arms. And we'll see who, uh, who comes out on top. It's becoming a bit of a mosh pit in here. As both sides struggle for superiority. Yeah, they are uh, losing. They're going to need some pole arms of their own in here. And there's a uh, Baltic Guard now doing a lot of Baltic Guard. Maybe we would have sent some of those onto the wall to maybe fight there. Um, but that's kind of turned into a bit of a stalemate as well. Um, but yeah, I guess maybe they need, feel like they need shock to counter the shock here. Um, if I was the Ottomans, though, or even the Hungarians, I'd be aware that these are these uh, buildings here are destructible. Uh, these are tents. You can just then destroy them, then flank around, and you might be able to get a bit of a side uh, side charge into these pole arms there. That might cause a bit of an upset uh, for the Hungarian lines there. And yeah, look at this the Hungarian general. Uh, sorry, the Hungarian knights trying to get this general. I was really hoping he was going to get friendly fired, but he did not. And the Hungarian knights are, uh, I think, going to get killed to a man there. That's incredible how um, few of them there are left there. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the general has survived for now. So uh, yeah, his army is still going to be uh, operational. I don't know where his forces exactly are. They might be in the in the city. They might not be yet. Yeah, Baltic Guard as well. They're also in here. I think. Uh, all the Janissary like pole arms are outside the city, as you can see here. Yeah, so all those Janissary pole arms are outside waiting. Um, really, they need to get some of those guys inside uh, onto the uh, into the street fights. I mean, these Azaps are about to go, and they have Javis. They should be sent onto the wall or you know allowed to use the Javis before they go into melee. Same on this side here. There's a lot of healthy Azaps with uh, a lot of um, ammo still in their uh, in their inventory. They need to use that first, and then. I'd say send them into melee because otherwise they're not going to get many kills. That's the whole point of an Azap is you javi a unit to death, then go in and do as much damage as possible. 
feel like the Ottomans have rushed it a little bit. They've been they've broken through a choke point and they've been rushing in. I, I would have been quite steady after breaking through these ones, and I would have I'd be bringing up uh, like Azap units, jabbing these pole arms as much as possible, and then I would uh, be sending in like the shock and uh, just like this. I mean, not the big blobs like this. this is an insane blob. I mean, if the defenders had a mortar, this is a prime target right now to be shooting. But they don't. Instead, they just have archers, which they are, are firing in overtime. They need to uh, actually um, stop being obstructed. They need to move so they can you know, actually shoot freely. And it looks like we've got crossbows now on the wall over here on the back side of the wall. And they're firing into this combat, I'm sure, down below. Trying to do as much damage as possible. Yeah, you can see where their crossbows are angled. They're firing somewhere into that mass of Turks down there. And looks like, yeah, we've got, uh, looks like the peasant uh, shock infantry over here just waiting patiently. They're getting ready to go uh, somewhere, maybe into a choke point, maybe outside the walls. Uh, the peasant uh, so the peasant spears, or the militia spears, they're still out here as well, I just remind people. Uh, you know, threatening the Turks. And because of these four units of spears and all that cab there, uh, the Turks are kind of starting to turtle up a little bit here uh, with their pole arms and their archers. And they've got shock infantry as well, I guess, to support. But the shock slowly but surely will get you know fed into those uh, city street fights numbers wise right now it's starting to turn in favor of the hungarians 6500 against 5300 the uh turks did ever so slightly start with the advantage it's still probably a better professional troops a lot of these uh troops of the hungarians are those peasants I think a general has died. Yeah, enemy general is dead. I think that might have been the really weak one uh, that we saw the Hungarian knights chasing. I think he's been shot by crossbows. But that general now do uh, dying is going to uh, cause there to be a few morale issues, I imagine. But we have got another charge here from the Hungarian knights. It looks like uh, another sort of sally forth. Another looks like a, a light cap going in as well. They're going to charge uh, a square here. Of Janice, that's pretty much been stopped in its track as that charge by that volley there. Really nicely done. And the Hungarians are now getting stuck into the uh, Janishes down there. It's not, not worth it at all. Didn't get a good charge off. Janishes are in square. The Hungarians will just die here. And they're also getting shot, looks like, by archers. Yeah, it's still like guard archers are shooting into them. Those Hungarians are going to die. It's a waste of good cavalry, really. Could have, instead of charging these guys here, charged. I mean, there's shock over here. Could have charged potentially another general. I mean, they were going to try and back them up, it looks like, with pole arms, but it's worth a go. And here you go. In goes uh, that Pronajar Lancer. It's getting into the Janissary uh, hybrids here, the lighter Janissary. It's not the heavy one. Decent charge into them. And now we're going to see a charge. And look at that. There's a general there in the back lines as well. How has he snuck through? But he has. I think he might have gone the same uh, the same route as the Pronajar Lancers, and he's got into the back lines of all these uh, forces they're fighting in the streets, and he's causing a lot of units to uh, waver and route here. That's a huge problem. The Pronajar Lancers, they're bouncing in and out of Janissaries, uh, whether that's a Billman or whether that's a Shock Infantry. They're just trying to ca cause as much chaos as possible, I think, in the Ottoman formation. And there you go, Serbian Despot, they're... Uh, looking for an opportunity I don't think the Serbs want to risk their general just yet these uh, spears over here they're tying down pole arms so they can't get involved and help in the counter cav uh, sort of like strategies that are going on over here the pole arms you can see they are losing there is a Turkish cav now getting stuck in there they uh, should deal they should deal with the uh, pole arms I'd imagine the spears you know so they're doing doing their bit being a pain uh, the general over here for the Hungarians, this general could get huge kills uh, if he can manage to somehow just run through all of these uh, units here. There is a lot of shock and swords turning around. I think they're trying to trap him. The shock here needs to get stuck in for the uh, 
the Hungarians get stuck in and try and, you know, encircle some more of these Turkish units. The we have a general v general here. This is a big risk, and there's a Janusz Polarm coming up to try and defend that general, that lieutenant there. I don't know where the Janissaries are exactly going, but you've got Billman here flashing with the uh, Janissaries as well. I think they're trying to try and, you know, force this choke point open. Billman finally being thrown in, which is what they needed like a little while ago, is Billman down these uh, streets here to try and, you know, move on the, uh, move on the Hungarians and, you know, just counter the Hungarian uh, pull arms as well. Baltic Guard about to feel the wrath of a uh, Hungarian general here. It's not an easy, uh, it's not an easy city to sort of use cab inside because the streets are quite narrow. Um, but they're doing their best here, the Hungarians. Back to the fight. It looks like that sort of sally out force has been defeated against it. I mean, they're having no uh, joy at the moment. Are the uh, Hungarians and the Serbs with their sally out forces. There are two spears still alive here. I think they're just trying to, you know, I think they're trying to chase down the Sultan here, trying to see if they could catch him uh, if he was busy microing elsewhere. Not a bad idea, but uh, yeah, it did not work. And uh, yeah, these uh, militia spears are probably just going to get run down by Cav in a moment. There are uh, still some nasty Cav units outside the walls. We've got uh, CPI Cav, we've got uh, the, ge the general here, the Sultan. Um, and I think. That might be it, actually, but there must be another Sultan, I think, knocking about. Oh, there he is, yeah. Beyblade bo uh, bodyguard in behind. I think they're going to see a bit of a sandwich here of these spears. Men are running! Stand and fight, damn you! The men's and there you go, the Ottomans show that they still have a bit of a bite. And uh, yeah, they have uh, routed those uh, those spears. And there you go, the Sally Out Force is pretty much defeated. And the Turks can once again contest this choke point without any worries of uh, units being in their rear. This general, he needs to be careful. I mean, I think he should be okay to get out now. I think all these units here have been routed. The uh, militia spam has worked. And now we're going to see uh, a charge here from the general. I don't know what he's going for. It's just a side charge. I mean, this is risky. It's, it's a lot of janissary pole arms and also some pretty decent archers. He's actually, uh, yeah, he's starting to lose. I think it is because of pole arms and also archers. Yeah, he's getting out of there. And that is probably the smartest. Uh, he's beaten this battle. He's done some absolutely crazy stuff as this general, but it might've paid off. It might've got his side uh, a victory. Uh, the balance of power is starting to shift in uh, favor of the Hungarians. I mean, they have around about 3,000 or 2,500 extra troops. The Janice and Billman here, they're moving forward. Nothing remains of this unit now. These elite bodyguards of the Sultan, these slave soldiers. They're going to go in and try and uh, deal with these uh, shock infantry. Finally, the Ottomans get the uh, the resources they need inside with the uh, the rear battle sort of being uh, dealt with and uh, finalized. These, uh, these pole arms are pretty knackered though, pretty battered. I don't know if they're going to win. One of them's winning, one of them is losing. So it gives a bit of a mixed uh, message of what's going on in there. I think we've got some slightly more elite shock infantry here for the Hungarians. I think there are some, some lights in here as well. But yeah, we've got shock infantry in here. They just seem to get focused down by archers. They still have quite a few uh, hybrid units here uh, of Janissaries through the Ottomans. If they just focus these guys down, they'll start to kill them off pretty quickly. Janissary, um, sorry, shock infantry had pretty low missile block chance. We'll see what happens. Uh, John Hunyadi is still alive, by the way. Uh, he is over here. He's just hiding in the forest. He's like, oh boy, all my knights are dead. Oh no, what are we going to do? Maybe Belgrade won't uh, stand today. The relief force is kind of, in, well, the cav side of it certainly killed off. The infantry is 
stuck in, in these streets as well. But yeah, it seems like the Hungarian forces mainly made up of like the shock to the left now, whether that's the uh, the more well trained ones, which are pretty battered, or it's the uh, those peasant uh, type units as well. Which is, it's going to be either all of those really. Uh, it looks like actually the peasants are on the move. They're off somewhere. They are off somewhere, but I'm not sure where exactly. But yeah, the struggle for these uh, this choke point is still going on. It's been a battle of really this this choke point here. Whether they should have done this or whether they should have, um, I mean, they don't they don't need such a large choke point. I mean, certainly two definitely could have been okay, like two sort of blocks down, but a third somewhere else might have been a good, an idea to sort of open up and stretch the defenders. I don't know. It's 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 hard to say. I always find um, like sort of like more choke points is better than sort of size of choke points. Um, but maybe I'm I, I'm wrong. Maybe I'm talking absolute rubbish. Maybe a large choke point is better. See here, archers focusing down these crossbows. Like the sheer amount of missiles coming onto this wall is insane. These crossbows are getting focused down. Uh, they just want to just get some uh, rear shots of these crossbows. It looks like into janissaries over here. So they are getting absolutely peppered by the uh, janissaries still outside the walls. And uh, yeah, they've lost about sort of 20 or so men there. Uh, but the janissaries using their ammo on uh, archers and crossbows instead of uh, on the shotgun tree is good for the defenders. I'm sure the crossbows won't complain about that. Yeah, the struggle continues. The struggle continues. These elite shock infantry here for the Janissaries. The enemy have rallied the They're going in. The Sultan has no choice but to send in his best now. I mean, he's already seen a fair few of these Janissaries go in, but... I think this is the creme de la creme of them. And there you go, I think they're about to route. There you go. The shock is about to route and now they can sally out if they want to. I mean, all they got to do is kill a gunner off. Um, and, and kill this unit, these units here, but they could sally out potentially. Talking of sally outs, here is a, uh, a very large peasant sally out going on now. I think we've got about five or six of these uh, peasant units about to uh, sally out and threaten the Turks from outside once again. They're like, you know what, all of our sally outs have failed already once before. Let's try another one. They are going to go in. The uh, peasants of Hungary come from all around the nation fight here at Belgrade and they are moving forward it's, yeah six units going in looks like they're going to be supported by a couple of generals here um, but they could do with some maybe some spears it looks like it's a militia spear that's, that could be sent out as well I'd, I'd probably send them you know send a decent bulk force out there you could start to overwhelm these Turks I mean just going head to head these uh, six units here could certainly tie down a lot of uh, Ottomans um, and the generals could then obviously support as well um, and then John Hunyadi on the other side can, you know, threaten and come in uh, in the rear as well if he wants to risk his life. Looks like uh, pole arms here. These guys will be racking up kills. But they are back in the choke point where the other pole arm co uh, comrade has been fi was fighting at the beginning of this fight. I don't know exactly where the pole arms are here. Yeah, it looks like the pole arms, the they're moving they're forward. They're going to combat these shock infantry. They'll kebab those shock infantry very easily. That is for sure. We're about to see peasants fight slave soldiers. Pretty both low, both low in society. I mean, the janissary is a bit higher maybe because uh, they can kind of like get promoted kind of high into society. They start pretty low as slaves though. There you go. General going in. I don't think this general's going to survive. I think it's a uh, Hungarian one. Whether he's got an army left, I don't know. But yeah, he is uh, very much outnumbered. And uh, he's going to get killed off here by uh, Bear Blake bodyguard. And also looks like Cav. They could do getting shock infantry in here just to tie down this uh, this uh, Cav just pretty quickly. Because John Hunyadi is coming into the back lines. And if he can, you know, just be left 
uh, to do whatever damage he needs to do. It'd be a big, big win, but it looks like he's going in for uh, swords and for archers here. Very nicely done there by uh, John Hunyadi. He's done a very good job there. He's taken a fair few losses, though. He's got 54 riders left. And the gunners aren't helping uh, in his cause here. They need to route this last uh, shock infantry here just so they can then uh, sally out can the uh, defenders just as they did in history. Looks like Silla Guard Archers, are they trying to form square? Yeah, they are. Like, these guys can form square while in melee. I feel like you should be able to do it while in melee. That's ridiculous. Uh, the gunners here still firing away, still you know, peppering these guys the where they can. The uh, pole arms here, they, they are losing uh, in a fight against shock in, uh, in a fight against shock retreat, but so is a shock and retreat. So uh, I think it's because this one here is flanking the pole arms why they're winning. Again, John Hunyadi charges the archers here and he falls. John Hunyadi is going to die here in today's historical battle. That is not so great uh, for the Hungarian cause. And uh, yeah, he, they're going to need a new like commander-in-chief. Whether that's going to cause a lot of these uh, militia units to uh, rout, it might do. I think it's maybe a little too late for the Austrian cause. As these generals battle away in here. And there are, yeah, some wavering, uh, wavering shocking machines here, the, uh, the militia. But I don't think it's going to matter too much. The Janus here still holding on. They're fighting to try and keep the, the Hungarians inside the city. Let alone fighting for the city itself. Yeah, they, they need to be careful they don't pull through here. Looks like they have managed to find a way out of the city, have these uh, heavy shock infantry they have snuck out around here. That is a perfectly legal move. Looks like uh, these horse archers here are going to get routed. Looks like another general here also for the uh, Turks is going to get killed. That is Mehmed the second, by the way, in that he is about to die. Our men have given up and are running for their lives. He might lives. already be dead, I'm not sure. There you go, there goes his uh, horse archers as well that were supporting him. I mean, they're okay in, uh, in melee. They're heavy bow cap. It seemed like they did okay as well. Certainly fighting against these light shock infantry. Yeah, Mehmed actually, I think, has managed to get out of there. He's going to run back to Constantinople. Lick his wounds and think about what he's going to do to the Hungarians and Belgrade. But it looks like, as you can see, we're getting a bit of a mass drought now taking place. And uh, I'm just going to fast forward now as uh, we just get through the uh, last few phases of this battle. But yes, history is going to repeat itself. And it looks like the... Uh, Hungarians are going to win here at Belgrade. The city is going to be saved. The Turks are going to be repulsed for now. And uh, yeah, this was certainly a really fun one. I enjoyed it uh, thoroughly. It was uh, really fun playing this one. And it was fun covering it again. Fairly close. I mean, there's still 3,000 uh, Hungarians. Um, but I mean, they still lost a uh, good 6,000 themselves. The, the Turks did a decent job. Um, I Like I said, I think maybe I would have change a few things. The Azaps, I feel like, didn't use all their jabbies, so they weren't really able to use their capability. Um, I would have landed on some more of these walls, maybe just stretch the defenders a little bit more. Um, and certainly, I would have maybe not kept that army in reserve. Though, yeah, you're risking uh, the, uh, the Cavs doing a lot more threats to you, but I feel like if they could overwhelm um, like the uh, Hungarians a little bit more in a 4v2 instead of a 3v2, they might have got further into the city and made it much more difficult for Hunyadi's Cavs to actually be of any effect. Um, the shock still would have been in the spears, but uh, yeah, the cab would have really struggled to do much in this uh, in this game. But uh, yeah, there you go. The general, I think, here is just re-rally. It's not the sultan. It's another one of his lieutenants, and uh, he's just going to re-rally. And I think he's just going to break in a second. And there you go. A Pyrrhic victory for the Hungarians. We'll end the replay and have a quick look at the end results. Uh, as I was saying, I was playing in this one. It's a scenario hosted on the uh, Discord. If you want to ever get involved in any of those battles, do feel free to join it. The link is down below in the description of this video. And uh, yeah, uh, my general John Hunyadi before he fell got 366 kills. My militia, like shock, one got 176 kills, but the rest really did nothing. Uh, neither did really my spears. Uh, one of my light cab got 110 kills. I think that's like killing archers. 106 kills for a Serviente here. Uh, 177 kills for Hungarian knights. And then one of them got 456 kills. I really hope more of them were going to get kills like this. But yeah, yeah, the cab was pretty ineffective in this game. Uh, Banana playing as uh, the Grand Duchy of Serbia. As those sort of like mercenary force that was uh, invested into Belgrade. 212 kills with his uh, despot bodyguard here. 
Uh, his spears, 121 kills. His swords, one got 108 kills. The rest didn't see action. And then his crossbows really came in clutch for him. 204 kills with uh, this one. 320 with this one. 333... Uh, three, 332 kills, sorry, with that one. 236 kills here with another one. Yeah, all of them getting triple figures. Uh, Drunk Norwegian playing as the Kingdom of Hungary, the other Sally Out Force. 136 kills with his general. His uh, shock, like his light shock, 103, the best of his uh, there. Uh, his uh, more heavy shock, getting 222 kills, 130 kills with uh, one here. And then his uh, light cab, 95 kills. And then his Hungarian knights, 102 kills. So yeah, again, his cab really didn't do too much in the way of damage. And then we have Omens uh, playing as the final uh, Hungarian army and another one of the defenders. 532 kills with his general bodyguard there. Incredible stuff. Uh, 422 kills with the uh, Axeman here, the uh, Shocking Tree. All got triple figures. Uh, Spears, 173 kills, 130 kills. 506 kills with his pole arms. Incredible. I mean, the other one did pretty well uh, with 144 kills, but 506 is insane. Uh, Swordsman, 214 kills. His archers, 202. 156 kills with his crossbows. 172, uh, 78 with another archer there. I missed that one. Uh, and then 274 kills with the crossbows there as well. Very, very good kills for the Omens. Then we have Theatrius the Great playing as one of the um, Ottoman armies. 102 kills with his uh, bodyguard before he fell. One of his Baltici guard, 227 kills. Uh, his Azaps and his uh, Voynux kind of struggled. It seems getting over the walls or through the breach. Uh, 95 kills, the best there for him. And then his uh, Morsa getting 137 kills. Then we have Geo uh, playing as the uh, Ottoman army the second one 198 kills with his uh general here before he fell oh, actually he might have routed it by the looks of it uh, and then his gunners yeah 108 kills they were a real pain in the go like uh so like guard archers didn't actually get as many kills as i thought but they were still also being a great pain his uh cpi cav 141 kills here and then 89 kills with the culverine um as well and then we have bulk playing as the third ottoman army 168 kills with his uh general 120 kills with the janissaries here um and then we've got uh like his yeah his axes really struggled getting 50 kills uh, 72 kills with his uh hybrid archers here his javi's getting uh, 158 kills is not too shabby and his uh nafatoon's getting 110 kills and the great bombard got 37 kills while bringing down multiple walls then we have uh, Ike playing as the final army for the Ottomans, the Sultan's army. 155 kills with the Sultan. All of his shock did really well. I mean, all got triple figures. 299 and 200 are the best of the bunch there. Uh, his pole arms, 169 kills, 168 kills. His Azaps, 148 kills, 116 kills. And then his Janitor, he's 104, uh, 94 kills. His uh, Sipi, uh, like uh, Bokav getting... Uh, 226 kills is not too bad for them either but there you go guys that is today's uh 1212 ad historical battle if you did enjoy and want to see more 1212 ad battles do check out the ones appearing on your screen now we've got some glorious ones there but don't forget to leave a like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any 1212 medieval action but until next time i'll see you in the next one bye for now